Doug Andrew here. I'm here with my son, also a financial strategist, Aaron Andrew. And we're gonna have a conversation uh, with you right now because maybe you've heard me state on this channel, Three Dimensional Wealth, that uh, I didn't think I would ever own an annuity. Well, uh, I may be rethinking that because some things have been happening, happening recently that I, I, I yes. was really surprised with. Mm -hmm. And so finally, there are a few indexed annuities that have higher caps than some indexed universal life. I never thought I would see the day. Me too. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna talk about the differences between an annuity and an IUL, because an IUL is still my favorite vehicle if you can qualify and uh, if you can fund it and put it in there and create tax-free income. So we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons. Um, I'm going to simply summarize, first of all, uh, why I made the statement I've never owned one and I doubted I ever would because an annuity, if you're not aware, is like a savings account with an insurance company, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah you're putting money into an insurance company and the multi-trillion dollar insurance industry is the backbone of America and the backbone of the world. And so annuities are usually deemed some of the safest repositories for serious cash. This is why sometimes uh, school teacher pensions and what have you are sort of designed mm -hmm. after an annuity type of a formula where your money goes in either after tax or maybe pre-tax, but it's tax deferred. But see, when you start accessing money out of an annuity, it's now taxable, whether it's a qualified plan like an IRA, 401k, 403b or whatever, or uh, if it's any type of a qualified plan, you're gonna have to pay tax on the back end. Yep. But if it's a non-qualified annuity, uh, you're putting in after-tax dollars and the growth is tax deferred. But when you start turning on income, out of an annuity, it's now taxable, right? The growth is taxable on a non-qualified, and the basis would be a return of principal, but yes, the growth would be taxable. Yeah, and it's uh, if you start turning on income, it's taxed LIFO. Let me just simplify that. That means last in, first out. So in a real simple example, uh, if you put $500,000 into an annuity, and let's say you were earning 10% just to keep it simple, uh, theoretically, if you annuitized it, immediately, meaning started to take income, uh, you ought to be able to pull out 10% a year, 50,000 a year, but that would be 100% taxable because you're only uh, taking out the interest and the last, in the last amount you're, you're earning okay, is, the, is the first money that's coming out. Mm -hmm. Only if you start to dip into your basis or the principal, would that not be taxed because you've already paid tax on it. And so that's why, you know, I go, mm, golly, indexed universal life, I can put money in and I can take it out tax-free even beyond my basis, mm -hmm. okay? So that's and the IUL, not the annuity. Yeah, yeah, that's the IUL. And so that's why I thought, mm -hmm. why would I ever want to own an annuity when an IUL <laughs> uh, can actually give me tax-free income? And historically, IUL has actually had higher caps than a lot of annuities. So I thought, why would I want that? Even, sometimes people go, well, an annuity doesn't have uh, some of the fees or charges that an IUL does in Index Universal Life because you have the cost of insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, for a long-term investment, I've usually been able to structure an IUL policy, even with the cost of insurance, to outperform an indexed annuity with the same company until now, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and so uh, this is why I wanted to record this conversation with my son. So I'm going to uh, ask you, Aaron, uh, what uh, might be some considerations for somebody? When is it appropriate for somebody to maybe consider an annuity versus maybe my favorite vehicle in an IUL? Yeah, good question. So basically, um, you know, a lot of factors go into it, but just some basic points is you might consider an I, or an, an, a fixed index annuity or an index annuity over an IUL if you're uninsurable, let's say, or maybe your age. So some clients that are at a certain age, it makes more sense to do the annuity because of their amount of time they have between now and their life expectancy. And some of them are uninsurable. So we had, I had a client recently that got uh, declined on the life insurance, the index, universal life, our favorite. And so now we're going to our, our next favorite, which is the index annuity. And, um, because of that, we can do it 
in now on them without uh, having to go through medical and so forth. And of course, it's gonna be taxable. But yeah, so looking at their age, and so sometimes people's age, sometimes um, we can't put all the money into the insurance, nor do we want to. We wanna diversify into a few places. Um, sometimes their money's tied up in IRAs and 401ks, and it doesn't make sense with certain tax brackets to take it all out. And so we're gonna leave it in that kind of a vehicle under the umbrella of an IRA, but now you can put it into an annuity as an IRA. So it's an IRA annuity. Uh, which you couldn't do it in, in the IUL. So the mm -hmm. IUL, you'd have to pay the taxes to get it in there. So I would say the main things is age, un, you know, not insurable or diversification. And now, of course, the rates, which we'll talk about. Yeah, sometimes on this channel, I've talked about uh, when I ask people, golly, would you like to accumulate a, a ton of wealth? And some people say, you know, uh, I don't care about being rich necessarily. I just want to be guaranteed that I'll never be poor or that I'll never run out of income. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, okay, well, there are some indexed annuities that uh, actually, uh, if you put money into them and you start taking an income, if you outlive the, the projection and your actual cash value or the money in there is, is depleted, you still get income until you die. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes annuities for people who wanna be guaranteed they'll never run out of money, might have been a good option. Uh, annuities generally don't increase in value when you die. I think some annuities might have some kind of death benefits. Small but. death benefits, or, but I mean, the thing is, what's kind of cool about them is there's, there's so many types. So again, we're not talking about variable. Annuities that get the term of having a lot of fees are those that are usually variable. So the ones we're talking about, again, indexed annuities or fixed index annuities, they have a fixed account and they have indexing, just like the IUL where you link to an index, you have a floor and a cap, or you have others that are the volatility control index accounts that have high participation rates and no cap. You got different options. And that's what's kind of neat is it's, it's like, we can put the money into this and the ones like you were mentioning that have the, the guaranteed income, there's some that have a 1% cost that are gonna give you a rider that have a, a guaranteed income for life. That if the annuity even runs out of money down the road, and if you live a long time, the annuity is gonna keep paying out till the day you die. So they have guaranteed income, kind of like a pension, but a guaranteed annuity is gonna have like a lifetime income benefit rider that'll give you guaranteed income for life. But some others that don't want that, they just want a place to put it for five, seven or 10 years is, you know, they wanna put their money into one of these annuities and have um, a good return, but not lose. So that's what's so cool is some of these out there right now have no fees. They have indexing caps of like seven and a half to 9% right now. So what's happened recently in the market is with the 10 year treasury, as you know, with interest rates uh, right now, at the time of this recording, interest rates have been going up recently quite a bit, especially on the 10 year treasury and so forth. So what's happened is the insurance companies with new money rates, it's called with annuities, they can react quicker with caps and participation rates. So a lot of these annuities, these fixed index annuities right now have gone up quite a bit in their caps. So like right now with the S&P 500, some of them have as high as seven to 9% on their cap. So guarantee of zero and seven to 9% on the cap where IULs are right there in that same range. Some companies are seven and a half, eight, some are up to you know 9%. And so some of these annuities have been down for years down in the three to 4% range on the cap because interest rates have been so low. But with interest rates rising, these annuities have reacted quicker because as these they as insurance companies take that annuity money and it comes in immediately to new money rates, they're offering way higher returns in these annuities. So they have some good historicals. I mean, zero's the hero, so you can't lose, and there's mm -hmm. no fees, which is pretty cool. So you have no cost. So if the money, if the market goes down, zero's the hero, your balance stays the exact same dollar amount. Now, the only thing to also consider with annuities is they are tied up a little bit more. You got a surrender charge period. You got you know access to 10% of the account up to the you know five, seven, or 10 years. So there are some things that's tied up a little bit. So there are things to consider when you look at it. But um, yeah, they can be used for guaranteed income. They can be used for great returns right now without risk. Um, so there's just some really good features right now with some of these that have really just happened literally in the last few months that is, um, these rates are way higher than they've been in years and years. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's probably what blew me away because uh, what's changed in the industry because of interest rates, uh, annuities, because maybe they're more nimble or whatever, they can respond with new money quicker to interest rates as they start to go up. 
where uh, insurance companies with IUL portfolios, it takes a little while for them to catch up with the interest rates going up. Mm-hmm. So that's- using, Okay, yeah, they're using a portfolio rate Insurance companies, so they have money and old rates and new yeah. rates. So they're gonna they're gonna lag a little bit. But they're gonna raise their caps as well, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. So IUL, as interest rates go up, uh, the caps will go up in the future. I mean, that, it's just a function of that. But right now is an opportunity that I didn't think I would see uh, this soon, where uh, fixed indexed annuities with caps at eight and a half nine percent. Uh, if you can't qualify for an IUL policy uh, because of these reasons we've been talking about, you may want to consider and see an illustration of a uh, fixed indexed uh, annuity to show you the growth with that kind of uh, caps at eight and a half and nine percent. Because mm-hmm. it's it's an incredible strategy. Indexing is one of my favorite strategies, and even if you can't get it totally tax free, the next best alternative would be an annuity where you have zero is your hero and the market goes down, but you can experience gains clear up to a cap. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I think it's an incredible opportunity. We wanted to do a video on this as a conversation because you probably heard me poo-poo annuities. Well, uh, the time has come where they may be a good choice for some of you watching this episode, or maybe your folks or somebody that you know. Yeah, and also, that some of these that have a cap of like eight or 9%, there's other strategies where they have these volatility control index accounts that might have no cap and have like 140 or 200% participation rate with certain index accounts right now in those products as well. And annuities, uh, they can score fairly well on our scoring system. Uh, In our book that we co-authored together, it's called The Laser Fund. A laser fund is a max funded index universal life, but we do talk about annuities in there. We actually show scores Mm -hmm. on liquidity, safety, rate of return, and and the tax benefits of an annuity. But you may want to claim a your free copy of that book. And when you're in there, you go to laserfund.com, L-A-S-E-R fund.com, or you can click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling, and I'll fire out a copy of that 300 page book. But while you're in there, you can take advantage of setting up a time to talk to a professional like Aaron that can help you see the difference between uh, IUL and see if you can qualify. If you can't, uh, they'll be happy to show you an illustration of uh, a fixed indexed annuity and how it may be the answer you're looking for. Thank you.